airbrushing. One of those tools and techniques that a lot of modelers swear by. However, you can get relatively good results just using hand painting and a hairy stick. But you've been out and you've bought yourself one of these. What would my suggestion be to help you improve? Well, perhaps go and get a simple kit with a slightly complicated paint scheme. Then you can really get to grips with your airbrush and put it through its paces. I'm Matt, this is Model Minute, and join me in this video as I build and review this. The Fiat G50 in 172nd scale from Airfix. So let's get this one down on the workbench. I have already done a full unboxing video on this particular kit, so if you'd like to take a look inside the box, make sure you check out this one. This is a vintage classic kit though, so it's going to be a little bit crude in places. But nonetheless, it'll be perfect for some airbrush practice. I'll pop a list of the products I used during this build on the screen now to give you an idea of the kind of things you might want to go and get if you fancy having a go at this one yourself. Throughout this build though, I will be using a Gallery Ace 98D with a 0.38mm nozzle. This one has been sent to me free of charge for review purposes, however my opinions do remain my own as I've not been paid to make this video or feature this product on my channel. On the whole, I'll be using between 10 and 20 PSI to get the results I achieve in this model and also I'll be thinning my paint to about 2 to 1, paint to thinner, so that it flows through the airbrush and has you guessed it, the consistency of milk. But without any further ado, let's crack on with this kit. As is quite usual for my builds, I will cut the parts away from the sprue using either my snips or a sharp knife. Any excess plastic will be carefully sanded away or removed with the same knife. As this is a fairly old tooling, and we'll cover that a little bit later on, there is some flash in a few places, which would have to be carefully shaved away. I'm going to be using Humbrol Liquid Poly throughout this build and the first thing to be glued into place was the chair for the pilot. This just gets mounted onto two moulded pins inside the fuselage half. I do want to display my aircraft in a flying pose and there is a moulded slot in the bottom of the plane. This was carefully opened up using my knife. And for the internal details, that's it. There's nothing else that goes inside apart from the pilot a little bit later on. So I glued together the two fuselage halves, taking care to make sure that they were aligned as best as possible. I then carefully sanded down all the seams with a sanding stick to make them a little bit more flush. The barrels of the machine guns get glued into place on the nose of the aircraft. And the engine component is assembled. I glued the engine inside of the cowling at this point as well. There are a few smaller details which need to go onto the engine, and these look to be an air intake scoop and the engine exhausts. This was a little fiddly, so I took my time here. After this, the upper wing parts were glued carefully onto the lower wing. I then glued into place the fuselage. I had to take some care here to make sure it was all aligned properly and there was no gap at the wing root. The horizontal tail surfaces were then glued into their slots on the tail. And the tail wheel can be glued into its hole on the bottom of the model. You can display the aircraft on the ground with the wheels lowered if you'd prefer, but as mentioned I want to have mine flying, so the raised landing gear option was glued into place on the bottom of the aircraft. These small probe-like protrusions on the wings were glued into place. I'm pretty sure that's probably a pitot tube. And at this point, it's now time to prime. So I'm using a Tamiya Fine Surface Primer in white as my go-to choice for this one. Granted, this does come out of a rattle can, so I'll be starting my airbrushing after this step. This primer was applied onto all of the model parts, which I've already assembled, and some details which are yet to be added a few thin coats would be needed. After this, I used Vallejo Model Air Black to pre-shade all of the panel lines and details on the aircraft. Unfortunately, due to the age of the kit and it being a vintage classic, the details are of the raised variety and they're not that thick. So I thought the best way to try and show some of these would be to use a pre-shading technique. 
Whilst that paint was drying, Tamiya Flat Yellow was thinned down with some acrylic thinner, and then this was airbrushed onto the spinner for the propeller, and also the engine cowling. I have done a bit of pre-shading on the cowling, and hopefully it should add some visual interest. That white primer, though, should help keep the yellow paint nice and vibrant. I used Tamiya XF19 Sky Grey as my base colour choice for this aircraft, so this will be airbrushed onto all of the lower surfaces of the model. I took my time to build up the opacity of this paint, particularly in the areas where the pre-shading was not going to be, and then worked the paint and blended it into those areas with pre-shading to try and give that element of contrast and bring out some of those details. And when the lower side was dry, I then masked up all of those areas to make sure I wouldn't get any overspray or paint bleed from the next layers. Tamiya Desert Yellow XF59 was then thinned down in the airbrush with some acrylic thinner as well, and this was sprayed onto the upper surfaces of the aircraft. This is going to form the base yellow color for the model in preparation for the lighter green modeling a little bit later on. And speaking of the modeling, I'm going to be using Vallejo US Light Green from their model air range. And this is where I think the element of practice for airbrushing is fantastic for this kit. So not only have we done just blanket areas where we've just had to spray the airbrush and cover a wide surface, but now we're needing to come in to do some fine control. So I dropped down the pressure a little bit using some patience and some very careful trigger skills took my time to apply the mottling pattern. Whilst there is a mottling pattern on the box, I kind of thought it'd be a bit hard to replicate that, so I went completely freestyle and did my own one. This was probably the most time-consuming element of the painting of this kit, and I did have to go over a few areas a couple of times just to build up the opacity. But I got to a point which I was happy and I moved on. Interestingly, if you don't own an airbrush or you don't really fancy using one, it is possible to build a kit like this with complicated mottling and doing it completely by hand. And part of the reason I didn't bother doing this by hand was because there's someone out there who's already done that. So isn't that right, Miss Modeler? Miss Modeler? Miss Modeler? Oh my god, really? Girl, you know what they say about guys who always have to buy aftermarket pita tubes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, crap, I meant to be in a video. Hi guys, I'm Miss Modeler, and it's more making time on someone else's channel. Modeler has wanted you all to see this. The Fiat G50. I uh, haven't tainted mine because, I mean, I was first doing mine, and I, I, I was also broke. So, yeah, mine's, mine's only just hand painted, but it's still one of my favorite models I've ever painted. Really proud of this little guy. And, well, let's go have a look at it. So yeah, go check out Miss Modeler's fantastic Fiat G50, which was completely done by hand, and see what kind of hand brushing techniques were used to get the results shown here. What I love about modeling is that everyone's different and they can put their own personal spin on it. And when we're looking up new techniques, I think it's important to get a wide range of different opinions and different methods to see which ones suit us both. But thanks, Miss Modeler, for taking the time to show off your model here. Anyway, moving on, we've still got a bit of assembly to do with this particular kit, and we haven't yet done our pilot. So whilst all the mottling was drying, I moved on to paint the pilot. And for the pilot, I thought I'd try something new. And thanks to the members of my model club, I've been able to afford this Army Painter speed painting set. And speaking of my model club members, a massive thanks to these guys on screen for the extra support they give the channel. If you'd like to join them, take a look at the links in the description. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome the newest member to the club, The Smoke Pit. Thanks for your support. Anyways, back to the build. So the good thing about speed paint, supposedly, is that you can just get away with using one coat. So I used peachy flesh on the skin of the pilot. It's quite a thin paint, but it acts a bit like a wash, leaving shades and contrasts in the recessed areas whilst being a bit lighter in others. When that was done, Satchel Brown was used as his overall colour for his flying clothes. Grim Black was applied to his boots and his flying goggles, whilst Pallid Bone was carefully painted onto his gloves. I know this figure is pretty small, so maybe we haven't quite got the effect that we were looking for with this paint, but there's definitely some use here. 
I'll experiment with this in the future and see where it goes. And it was at this point I realized I'd made a mistake. In the instructions, it actually tells you to glue the pilot in before you close the fuselage halves. And I didn't think anything of it and thought it would be fine. But here, the pilot just doesn't fit. So I think I'm gonna have to do some surgery. I carefully cut away parts of his arm so that he would fit inside of the aircraft. Fortunately, it won't be too noticeable. A little bit more paint would be used to hide the areas that I've trimmed. And now, because I'm feeling particularly lazy and I've got tired of cleaning out my airbrush, I'm just going to use this Army Painter Satin Varnish to pre-coat the aircraft for decals. A smooth varnish like this should help prevent silvering, which is those little air bubbles trapped underneath the decal film. A few thin coats would be applied, and then I moved on to the decals. So these are printed by Cartograph and they are printed to a very nice quality indeed. So I cut the sheet into more manageable parts and dipped them into warm water so that they would release from the backing paper. Micro scale, micro set and sol will be my decal setting solutions of choice for this build. First up, the micro set in the blue bottle was applied to the relevant areas on the kit and the decal was carefully slid into position and manipulated until it was in the right place. The decals do go onto the model relatively well. The only one I had any issue with was the band on the fuselage, but you do need to make sure you get it the right way round and in the right place so it actually wraps all the way round. After I've carefully got the limited number of transfers into the right places, a little more micro sol from the red bottle was then brushed over the top to further soften the transfers down and make them appear as if they were painted on. Whilst the decals are drying, I am going to revert to a little bit of hand painting. The back of the propeller blades were painted with Vallejo black. So too was the tail wheel at the back of the aircraft and the wheels that were visible on the bottom of the model. The Leo aluminium was carefully brushed onto the front side of the propeller blades and was also used on the leg of the tail wheel. There are a couple of tiny transfers that need to be added onto the propeller when the paint is dry, so I did this at this point. And now it's time to seal in all of those transfers and make sure they don't peel off or get damaged during handling. I'm using Humbrol 49 acrylic varnish. This is just a simple rattle can again. This should also help dull down the satin varnish which was applied previously and give a more uniform look to the aircraft. Vallejo gunmetal grey was carefully painted onto the engine taking care to avoid the yellow on the engine, which we've already airbrushed. I would also pick out the machine gun barrels on the nose. Some Vallejo tan earth would be painted onto the inside areas of the cockpit. I found that the propeller didn't quite fit into the engine, and I ended up opening up the uh, hole in the middle of the engine with a small drill bit just so it would actually fit. When this was done, the propeller was pushed through the engine and then this small retaining part was used to hold it in place at the back. The spinner for the nose was then glued into place on the propeller. The pilot, which I've actually not had on the aircraft uh, this entire time, purely because I didn't want to coat it in various layers of varnish, was then glued onto his chair. The engine was then glued into place on the nose of the model. A little bit of a disclaimer here, I did do some work on the engine off, off camera. Where it mounts onto the nose, it didn't quite fit. It was at a funny angle, so I had to trim a little bit of plastic away there. But it was just a matter of taking some away, testing the fit and seeing how it went on. And I got to a point where it, it, it didn't look wonky, so I was happy with it. A clear part for the windscreen is included and I decided I'd just paint the framework using the same yellow colour from Tamiya and a fine brush. And when that paint was dry, it was carefully glued into place on the aircraft using some Humbrol Clear Fix. This glue is a little bit stringy, so you do have to be careful you don't get it in the wrong place, but it should dry clear and strong and not fog up the plastic, which plastic cements can do. My final step was to add a 
Airfix Vintage Display Stand. However, this is not included in the kit. This is a product that you will have to go and get separately if you want to display this particular model in a flying pose. And again, I have made a video on them if you'd like to check that out. But with that, I'm calling my build of the Fiat G50 in 172nd scale complete. So what do I think of this kit? Well, it's a vintage classic kit with a pretty old tooling. The tooling for this kit dates from 1967. So as can be expected, it doesn't have the finesse or the details of kits that are more recent. However, that's not the reason why I actually did this kit. I was actually struggling with a bit of motivation and I didn't know what I wanted to do. And this only has 33 parts inside the box and I thought, how hard can it be? I don't always like airbrushing. I find airbrushing to be quite a difficult skill at times. And that's part of the reason why I get put off airbrushing sometimes. So I thought this would be a perfect kit to just knock together and have a practice and have a play with doing some airbrushing. And as we've mentioned, we've had airbrushing whole areas, we've done some pre-shading, and we've even done some modeling in this. So this is a perfect kit for trying out some new techniques and skills. One of the positive sides about this kit is that if you do want to build one and have a play around with some new products and skills and paints and things, it's not exactly going to break the bank. It does retail for £6.99 here in the UK at the time this video was being made. And I think that when you finish it to a reasonable standard like I have here, it doesn't look too bad. It does also allow you to attempt other things if you want to do so. For example, you could do scratch building for the internal cockpit areas, maybe even some panel lining, and you could throw on some rivets if you wanted to. On the whole, whilst this is a fairly crude model, and you might have to do a little bit of work in a few places to make it look a little bit more presentable, it's something that you can knock out in a day or two. And I actually keep a log of all the builds that I do inside my modeler's journal. This is a book that I've written specifically, and you can find it on my Amazon page. And in there, I just keep a track of everything that I've been doing, because otherwise I'll just forget. So this one in particular, uh, I took two days to do this one. I think I started it on a Saturday and finished it on the Sunday, leaving overnight for drying time. I did make a note here in my little book that I probably did about actual eight hours of work, so a lot of it there was drying time. I did make another note as well that that decal band that was around the um, fuselage near the tail, I could have just painted that. Because I used a white primer, I could have just masked that area and left it white rather than having to mess about with a decal, but um, I guess that's the power of hindsight. But yeah, I think it's probably time to start wrapping this one up here. This is a kit that does have its issues. It, the fit isn't necessarily the best, there is some flash, the details are questionable in places, and there were some areas which I had to trim bits of plastic away to get the kit to actually fit together. Again, you could do more work on this to upgrade it to a higher level of finish, but despite all that, it's not exactly an expensive kit, and it does come with some quality features such as those cartograph decals. The instructions were relatively easy to follow, and those painting and decal placement instructions being printed in full colour are very handy to see as well. Personally, I just had a lot of fun, and I think that I've improved my airbrushing skills thanks to the extra practice that this slightly more complicated paint scheme has given me. As a side note, this airbrush that was uh, kindly sent to me to try out by a uh, gallery, it works okay, doesn't it? I think it's uh, not too bad for a slightly budget to higher end uh, airbrush. I did find that I could run a few different paints through it after a little bit of bubble cleaning in between each one just to get um, the kit finished quite quickly. It does seem to be quite forgiving if you're less than careful with your cleaning uh, routine. But I do find the trigger there has quite a lot of um, pressure required and it can get a bit tiring over time. But I'm sure as time progresses, I'll be trying out other airbrushes and finding one that I really do like. But yeah, what did you think of my build? Let me know down in the comments. Do you agree with my assessment of this kit and if my review at the end was fair? Don't forget as well to go check out Ms. Modeler's video so you can have a different opinion on this model and some great tips on how to do this one if you don't have an airbrush. As always, there are other ways to help support this channel if you're not a Model Club member and full information is below the video. 
Alternatively, the best way to help support this channel for free is by subscribing with notifications turned on. That will mean you never miss a modeling upload. Finally though, I think the last thing to say is a massive thank you to you for watching this one and I'll see you on the workbench again next time. As a side note, whilst I know I said that this was given to me for free by uh, Gallery. As a side note, I know that I said this was given to me for free by Gallery. Oh, I can't even say that. What is their name? Gallery. Gallery. As a side note, uh, this aircraft... Oh, my word.